You know what? I'll come back and we'll try to do it. It's a good question. Let's, let's try right now. What would you do? The arrows would have to be reversed, right? The arrows go in the opposite direction. And what about the final and initial states? We want to go backwards, so we kind of want to start where we end. And then we want to end where we start. So look what happens when you do this kind of strange transformation. We reverse all the arrows. Boom, I reverse them. Poof. I turn this into a start state. And I erase its final state. And I turn this into a final state. What do you notice about that machine? There's something really strange about it. Hmm? You've got an arrow. Yeah. <laughs> well, you can have an arrow that goes back to itself. That's OK. This is reverse now, right? So it's a, it can't see all the inputs. And loop, it can't loop back to itself on all the inputs. Otherwise, we'll get stuck there. True. That's true. And there's two zeros. So what do I do when there's a zero? Do I stay here or do I go that way? Right? So it was a really good idea to reverse the arrows and to switch the final and, 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 and the initial states. But when I do it, I get a machine that doesn't even make any sense. And it seems to be wrong. <laughs> so, so right, I mean, well, I guess how wrong can you be when you don't make any sense? <laughs> Here's the thing. This is a good idea. The idea is very good. It's just that this really begs us to ask the question, well, what does it mean to have a choice on the same symbol. If we can make sense out of what that means, maybe this method actually really works. It turns out this method does work. We just have to explain what it means to have two symbols on the same thing. We, if we say it's meaningless, or if we say, oh, we might get stuck here, then, then it's going to be wrong. But if we give it correct meaning, there is a way to interpret this reverse, and then convert it back to a deterministic machine, and we would actually get the reverse. So it's the right idea, it's the right idea, and it's the right idea. And it's going to introduce non-determinism in about five or 10 minutes. Non-determinism is exactly this. You can have more than one arrow coming out of a state with the same symbol on it. So the question is, what does that mean? How do you decide what gets accepted and what doesn't get accepted in a machine that doesn't tell you what it's doing in any state? I'm going to do this or this? Nah, nah. All right, we'll talk about that in a few minutes. I'm going to do one more of these, well, two more. Here's a quick one. Everyone is followed by at least two zeros. Binary strings again. Everyone is followed by at least two zeros. I want to do this one because instead of giving the state semantic meaning right away, this one is more of a left to right. Let's imagine that we're the machine. How would we do it? This is much more of a real-time left to right processing thing, not a recursive idea, not a semantic idea. Let's go ahead and start. Here's the start state. If I see a 0, I don't need to do anything special. But if I see a 1, then I'm in a state that remembers that I'm now in the second stage of my computation. Sometimes states don't have semantic memory, so to speak, but they remember where you're up to in the computation. I've just seen a 1. Now I need to get at least two zeros. Otherwise, I don't accept. So in order to continue, there have to be two zeros. That's my continuing step. If any point along the way I didn't get a 0, I die. 1, 1, the dead state. Yes, directly follow. Yes, yes, yes. Right. I know you know what I meant. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Thank you, Donna. Uh, if there's two zeros afterwards, then what? Then we're OK. And we've got to look for, where are we? And where should we continue? Is this machine going to go on forever? You know, sometimes finite state machines go on forever. It seems back to itself, and one, it goes back to the beginning. OK, so can I? Or we can just go back just, to you, these. You, Tony's right. On a 0, we'd stay here. And on a 1, we could go actually to here on a 1. And if that's the case, then these two states are, for all intents and purposes, identical. I, I'm pointing that out because that's the idea of minimizing machines. What you try to do is notice groups of states that actually do the same thing. For whom it doesn't matter where you start, they always tell you yes or no together. So actually, I made a new state here, but I just realized that it's the same as this state. So now I go back, and I just wing that arrow back to here. And that's OK. 
right? What you said is fine too, Tony. It would work just as well. Just the state shorter this way. All right. Okay, this example? One more example, and then, and then we're done. This is a little bit trickier, but not too bad. Uh, binary strings that are not divisible by 3. So now you don't have the nice just you know, power of 2 thing, where you can just look at the end of the symbols. Now you really have to do division in some sense on this binary string. Now when you do division, at least the way you learned it when you were in third grade, you have to store a lot of information. I mean, you have to remember, it seems, you know, the result as you go along. And that's proportional you know, to the size of the string you have. And that doesn't seem like it's constant. If I give you a longer string, it's going to take you longer, a bigger amount of space to do the division. And that's true. Division, actual real division as a computation, does take space that grows and is not finite. That's proportional to the log of the size of the string. So we can't do real division. So how are we going to do this? Well, we don't really have to do the division here. We have to just figure out whether it's divisible or not. And in order to do that, we just have to figure out what the remainder is. And you were never taught just to figure out the remainder when you were in third grade. But if you were, they could have taught it to you. And all you have to do is remember one or two or three numbers as you go along. So let's consider what that means. Before we write the machine, this is much harder. This you can sit up for a few hours if you don't get the idea right away. Let's do this. Here's a number. We want to know if it's divisible by 3. Let's not convert it to base 10 and do the division in our head, because that just begs the question. Instead, let's pretend we're the machine, and we get to look at this left to right. So now we're staring at the 1. Let's say that was all we got. Is it divisible by 3 or not? What is it divisible by? What's the remainder when you divide it by 3 is what I mean. Oh. One. 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 Right. So that's what we're going to remember. We're going to remember, if I stopped right now, what would the remainder be? If I stopped right now, the remainder would be 1. Now I'm going to continue. I put a 0 on the end of my string. Let's not calculate that this is a 2, and therefore 2 is divisible by 3. Let's calculate how the remainder changed when I put a 0 on the end of a string whose remainder divisible by 3 I already knew. Let's do it recursively. This is a recursive idea. If I knew the remainder was 1 and I stick a 0 on the end of the string, what happened to the string in size? It doubled, it doubled in size. If I double a string in size, then I double its remainder with respect to 3. If it was, had a remainder 1, now it's got a remainder 2. So I double this. Now it's 2. How much information am I keeping track of? One piece of information, what the remainder is. How many possibilities are there for that? Either 0, 1, or 2. Three states is enough to do this. Let's continue. When I move on to this third spot, double it and add 1. So if my previous remainder was a 2, I double that. I get a remainder of 4, which is really a remainder of 1. Then I add 1, which is really a remainder of 2. All right, so it stays a remainder of 2. Then I move on to here. It's another 1. Double it and add 1 stays 2, same as before. And now, same thing, double it and add 1 stays 2. So when I'm all done, I know this has a remainder of 2 when I divide it by 3. Now we'll check it this, the, the other way. Uh, what is this number? 1, 3, 7, 15? No, geez. What is it? 1, 2, 4. 16. 23? 23. So 23 divided by 3 leaves a remainder of 2. Good. OK. Let's write a machine to do this. You all think you can do it? Let's try. We're going to have three states. This one is going to be a remainder of 0. This will be a remainder of 1. This will be a remainder of 2. And I start in the remainder 0 state, because when I haven't seen any symbols at all, the empty string has a remainder of 0. Now let's calculate what happens to the remainder as I add strings on to the right end. If I add a 0, I double the string or the remainder. So doubling twice nothing, still nothing. If I add a 1, I double plus 1. Take care of that state. Let's go here. If I have a 0, I double it. That moves it to 